Welcome to tutorial 7 where we're going to discuss the chi-square and measures of association. In this chapter we will revisit cross tabulations and learn how to obtain what are called measures of association for the relationships we are analyzing. We will learn about the chi-square to determine whether an observed cross tab relationship departs significantly from the expectations of the null hypothesis. We will look at the lambda which is when one, one or both variables in the cross tabulations are nominal. And then when both variables are ordinal, we will look at the summers D. We will also learn about Kramer's V, which is a statistic measuring the strength of association or dependency between two nominal variables. So let us start by analyzing ordinal level relationships. Let us open the GSS 2006 dataset. Consider this hypothesis. In a comparison of individuals, younger people are more likely to perceive scientific consensus on the causes of global warming than our older people. From this tutorial onwards, we're going to be running our commands using a do file. The commands are derived from the Stata Companion book, um, and uh, we will be discussing each command, but it's just to get us used to the idea of working with do files. So we will open the do file that has been saved for this tutorial, which is tutorial 7 do, and uh, we will begin. Okay, the data set contains an ordinal variable named science underscore gw3. So if we go to our do file and we run the, the tab command there, we can see that this variable is the extent to which respondents think that environmental scientists agree among themselves about the existence and causes of global warming. What we want to do is to check our hypothesis by conducting a simple cross tab. The independent variable that we will use is called cohort 3. Uh, this variable has been created from exercise 3 on page 56 in your book. Let us run the command tab science underscore gw3 cohort 3 comma call no key. If we look um, on the column percentages in the scientists agree row, according to the hypothesis, as we move along this row from older to younger, the percentage of respondents thinking that scientists agree should increase. And this is what's happening. So we see that the percentages increase from 42.74% uh, among the oldest cohort to 46.01% among the middle generation to 48.18% for the youngest age group. So something is going on there. However, we want to determine if this relationship is a strong relationship or is it a weak relationship, as two analysts might disagree. This is where the chi-square comes in. Let us rerun the command while including the chi-square. We use the same command that we just did, but we add to the end of it a chi-2, telling Stata that uh, it should calculate the Pearson chi-square. We get our cross-tabulation again, in addition to a bottom row giving us the chi-square results. And what this is telling us is that the computed value of the Pearson chi-square is 2.185. Now, if the observed data perfectly fit the expectations of the null hypothesis, this test statistic would be zero. As the observed data depart from the null's expectation, this value grows in size. So for our cross-tabulation, Stata calculated a chi-square test statistic equal to 2.185. Now, we need to ask ourselves, is this number statistically different from zero? which is the value we would expect to obtain if the null hypothesis is true. So, if we put it in another way, we can ask this question, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is correct, how often would we obtain a test statistic of 2.185 by chance? This is where the probability value comes in, which is PR equals to 0.702, and what this is saying to us is that the p-value for the chi-square test statistic is saying that 
by chance, 70.2% of the time, we would obtain a test statistic of 2.185. So this means that the null hypothesis actually is on the safe inferential ground. So what we know so far is that we cannot conclude that, yes, the younger generation are more likely to perceive scientific agreement than our older generation. But we can still augment our analysis by using the Summers D, which is a measure of association that gives a precise reading of the strength of the relationship. But before proceeding, find out whether Summers D is installed by clicking the command window and typing which Summers D. If Summers D is not installed, return to Chapter 1 and follow the download and installation instructions. So we run the command, the Summers D command, Summers D cohort, which is the independent variable, followed by the dependent variable science underscore GW3. Theta returns a Summers D of negative 0.04. We need to concentrate on this negative sign. This is telling us that by knowing the generation of the respondents and how well we can predict individuals' global warming opinions will improve by 4%. So in conclusion, younger people are not more likely to perceive scientific consensus on the causes of global warming than our older people. For more analysis and examples on Summers D, refer to pages 140 to 143 in the Stata Companion book. Now let us go to analyzing nominal level relationships. We will be using the Kramer's V, which is a useful tool in con interpreting controlled comparisons when you want to get an idea about the relative strength of two or more relationships. We want to investigate if the racial difference on the death penalty is the same for Southerners and non-Southerners, or might the racial divide be stronger in the South than the non-South. We're going to use for the dependent variable cap pun, so we run the tap cap pun command, and we get our results, and we see the values coded 0 for those who favor, and 1 for those who don't favor capital punishment. For the independent variable, we will ra use race underscore 2, which indicates to us if the respondent is white or black. And for the control variable, we can use south. You can tap south or run the tap south, and you see that it's coded 0 for non-southerners and 1 for southerners. Okay, so what we will run now is to sort by south, by sort south, tab, cap bun, and then race underscore two, column, no key, chi two, and v. Note that this is a capital V, which is instructing Stata to report the Kramer's V. Okay, so let us analyze the results. Among non-Southerners, 70.4% of whites favor capital punishment in comparison with 40.74% of blacks, nearly a 30 percentage point gap. Among Southerners, however, the percentage of black who support the death penalty increases to 43.15% and the percentage of whites increases to 78.61%. Thus, by just looking at the percentages, we deduce that the racial gap is wider in the South. Now let us consider the chi-square. In both cases, the results and the p-value indicate that it is highly unlikely that either relationship was produced by random sampling error. But if we compare the Kramer's V, we find different results. What is this telling us? What the Kramer V is giving us is an indication of the relative strength of the two relationships. And this means that the relationship between race and capital punishment views is stronger in the South. Remember how we use the Summers D uh, as a pre-measure for the ordinal relationship? Let us now turn to lambda. Run lambda cap pun, which is the dependent variable, followed by the independent variable race underscore 2, 
And let us use the if qualifier here and say if south equals zero. Remember, it's double equal when we use the if qualifier, equal equals zero. By the way, also lambda needs to be installed just as you did with the summers D. So we see that Stata produces a table, and at the bottom we get different lambda statistics. Lambda A, B, and just plain lambda. So which one do we use? We will use the lambda A, which is 0 0.0519. And what this is telling us, that compared to how well we can predict capital punishment opinions without knowledge of race, by knowing race, we can increase our predictive power by about 5.19% among the non-Southerners. Let us also do the same for south equals 1. And we run the command, the same command, but this time if south equals 1. And here we see that by knowing race, we can increase our predictive power by about 11.34% among Southerners, a higher percentage than among non-Southerners. It is good to keep in mind that when checking for measures of association to try the various statistics that we have to make sure we get the most complete and comprehensive picture possible. For more analysis and examples on Lambda and Kramer's V, refer to page 145 in the book. This brings us to the end of the seventh tutorial. The next topic is correlation and linear regression, and this is covered in tutorial eight.